The following message is brought to you by the concerned shareholders for a better BioVail. In today's highly volatile, complicated, and changing pharmaceutical marketplace, only the best will prosper. Not long ago, BioVail Corporation was a force to be reckoned with, a juggernaut in the pharmaceutical industry. A modest investment in the company back in the mid-90s yielded big returns under former CEO Bruce Bryden. But those days seem all but gone. From Canadian success story to a company whose shareholder value has all but evaporated to an $11 stock price. How did this happen? How did the incumbent board and management team let things slide so badly? Examining the company's performance since the appointment of Dr. Doug Squires in 2004, it appears the incumbents have failed. Shareholders have lost billions under the incumbent board and management, and rather than focus on a plan to fix it, they still obsess about the past. This is the 12-page letter that Dr. Squires and Mr. Wells sent to shareholders on June 5th. In it, they talk about Melnick more than 100 times, but only talk about their own plan in two paragraphs. The incumbents appear not to be focused on their own plan. They're not talking about their own leadership. Instead, they're trying to distract from their own plan by planting false fears with shareholders. Why would incumbents try to change the channel? To distract people from comparing the plans side by side? To avoid comparing themselves to a proven leader like Bruce Bryden instead of Doug Squires? Who left his former company just when the storm clouds were gathering and the FDA came knocking? Squires left behind a number of friends to clean up the mess and then subsequently hired them at BioVail. Under the incumbents, the company has undergone review after review after review with few tangible results. Then there's Bill Wells with only scant experience from his 100 days or so attending BioVail board meetings. And where was the full and robust executive search for the top job? Bill Wells headed up the special committee that recommended Bill Wells for the job. And all of this happening quickly and at a time when there seemed to be big changes happening at his old job, with his old team saying that the company needed to get more focus and clarity. Mr. Wells was thrust upon the scene, entering the pharma industry with only financial experience and no meaningful background in pharma. He came out of the gate with a poorly thought-through plan. Focusing on new chemical entities, or NCEs, in central nervous system therapies, or the CNS specialty market, is far from a walk in the park. It is a strategy that is believed to be expensive and risky. Any pharma veteran would know that CNS is a difficult area in which to succeed. Simply put, the incumbents don't have the experience or the ability to bring BioVail back. It's clear that changes are required. And change in crisis means learning from what you've done well at in the past. What are you doing? Enter Bruce Bryden, CEO of BioVail in its formative years. Under Bryden, stock growth was impressive. New products with new partnerships paved the way to extraordinary success. Bryden wants to come out of retirement to restore that legacy. I want to come back because I believe I can do the job. We can find somebody else to run this company and, and maybe somebody who has even more eminent qualifications than I do. But it's not going to be somebody who comes this to the, into this company on day one with an understanding of the history, the current market conditions, and is able to grasp everything, put it together and run as quickly as possible. The concerned shareholders propose a four-step plan to turn BioVail around, to return shareholder value and growth. First, install a new board and create an advisory board of pharmaceutical excellence. Install a proven management team. Reinvigorate the product pipeline with an emphasis on ANDAs and pharma similars. And lastly, recapture the entrepreneurial spirit, once at the heart of the company's success. What runs a business is taking your damn jacket off and rolling up your sleeves and eliminating what doesn't have to be considered and getting the job done.
And that's what real-world pharmaceutical people do in this industry. But Bryden's plan and that of the incumbents are at complete opposite ends of the spectrum. On one hand, a high-risk strategy with tremendous uncertainty that shareholders will not recognize for many years. Or on the other, a conservative approach with multiple strategies suited to a rapidly changing pharmaceutical environment. Proposed better by Avail board member Joseph Kravalka. It really does make no sense at all. I, I don't know where they came up with this. Uh, this must be some consultant group that has decided to uh, give them this idea. Uh, I would challenge them to step forth and respond to how they came to this, uh, uh, what I consider to be an idiotic conclusion. The real question comes down to how long shareholders can afford to stand by and watch as the company's financial prospects continue to erode. The incumbents continue to line their pockets with excessive compensation. Not to mention that they also seem to be preparing for a rainy day at the AGM through golden parachute arrangements. Dr. Doug Squires, who's been the CEO and chairman for the last year, has given up his CEO role after successive failures to simply remain as chairman. His reward? A $3.4 million golden parachute. And what about Bill Wells? the new CEO who left Loblaw amidst their executive shakeup. Squires and the board gave him a deal that'll pay $3.5 million to an offshore trust account if the current board is ousted at the AGM. Well, what you want is somebody in that company that is going to make a decision that is looking out for you, Joe Shareholder. You don't want somebody that's looking out for enriching themselves uh, through salaries and bonuses uh, and severance packages. This is core development of pharmaceutical products that have to be commercially viable in a very short period of time. And you want people is, uh, that are, are savvy in that area, have done it before, and have been successful. Looking at a side-by-side -side performance comparison, it appears that the incumbents have not been able to create any tangible evidence that points to a successful run anywhere close to the company's previous legacy. A legacy that just over a year ago, at the 2007 AGM when company founder Eugene Melnick retired, Doug Squires was only too happy to heap praise upon, calling his contributions immeasurable in achieving new heights and revenues. When Melnick retired, the stock price was $25 and rising. Now, just a year later, the stock has dropped by more than half. And today, Squires and the incumbents have accused Melnick of having a personal agenda. He does. The poor performance of the company has cost Melnick not thousands of dollars, but hundreds of millions of dollars. He's lost more than any other shareholder. According to Bryden, he just wants to be retired with a performing stock. He wants to see the company move forward. He wants to see the revenue line grow. He wants to see the profit line grow. And he wants to see the value of the equity offering grow in value. And that's what all shareholders want. His desires are completely and totally aligned with the shareholder base. He is the biggest shareholder. And it's very unusual in the pharmaceutical industry for something like this to take place. This is uh, very unique. Someone is spending a, an incredible amount of money trying to bring shareholder value to everyone. Melnick's sole interest in launching a proxy battle is to help put in place a highly experienced team, one that understands the high margin, high stakes pharmaceutical industry from the inside, one that will build back the stock value shareholders once enjoyed by turning vision into reality. What I'll bring to the table is a team that are going to be able to sift through what doesn't have to be looked at and get to the thing that matters, and that's results. The only thing that a shareholder at the end of the day cares about is results. BioVail can make a comeback, but new leadership with a laser focus on both short and long-term growth is needed now. The concerned shareholders clearly understand this. The, the objective here is not to spend the money. The objective here is to return shareholder value uh, and to pay dividends. Uh, and in fact, I think that's where this management team can take this. I will do what is best for our company, 
and I will do my utmost to bring our company back to prominence. So ask yourself, what type of biovale do you want? If the answer is a bright and prosperous future, then the answer is clear. Vote your yellow proxy for a better biovale. For further information on how to cast your yellow proxy vote, please click on the Vote Now button located in the right-hand corner of this website.